So this session is um, about how to use your anxiety to your advantage. Um, maybe some of you saw my session last year on DrupalCon Europe. It was being open about being human. And in that session, I shared some of my personal experiences dealing with depression and anxiety, which I had for many years without knowing until I finally talked to someone. And this year, I'll focus more on anxiety and how, what it is, some symptoms, uh, strategies to cope with it, and how you can use some of its traits for your benefits. I, I hope it's helpful. I'll keep the video on uh, just for a, another, for this slide, uh, and then I'll turn it off. Uh, we were instructed that it's better for the replay with the video off. So who am I? Uh, I'm Diego Costa. I was born in Brazil. Um, that's where I did my studies. And then I moved to Canada in 2007 with my wife. And that's where we started our family. Our three children were born there. And um, we spent 12 years there before moving to Germany in 2019. That's also when I started working with Drupal and attended my first DrupalCon in Amsterdam, which was great. I had the chance to experience DrupalCon in person before it became all virtual. I'm currently working uh, at IPAM, and I'm um, responsible for growing our Drupal practice in EMEA. When I'm not working, I love spending time with family and traveling. And you might be able to see in my back there are some picture frames of places we have visited. It hasn't been that easy to travel lately, but we hope to restart soon. As I mentioned, I was diagnosed with uh, general anxiety and depression disorders back in 2018. And for me, it was a relief to finally understand what was going on inside my head. And that allowed me to start moving forward. Uh, it hasn't been an easy journey. Had to learn to take one day at a time. And some days are definitely better than others. But I can see the progress and it's definitely worth it. Yeah, so that's, I'm anxious. Uh, and finally, as I said last year, I'm not a doctor or a therapist. So, um, I'm sharing things I learned while researching the topic for my own benefit, for this session, listening to different podcasts, and also sharing things that have helped me in the past. So hopefully it's beneficial. And now I'll stop my video. And let's move on. So what, what's anxiety? Anxiety is actually quite normal. It's our natural response to stress. It's been there since the earliest days of humanity. Uh, the approach of predators and incoming danger could set off alarms to help us take action. And these alarms become more noticeable in the form of a raised heartbeat, sweating, increased sensitivity to surroundings pretty much everything I was feeling before I started the session. But this danger causes a rush of adrenaline and this in turn tr triggers these anxious reactions. It's a process called fight or flight response. It actually prepares humans to physically conf confront or flee any potential threats to safety. Of course, the, nowadays, running from larger animals and imminent danger is not as much as a concern as it was in the past. And anxiety is now revolve around work, money, family life, health, and other crucial issues that demand a person's attention. But they don't necessarily require the fight or flight reaction. It's normal to feel anxiety from time to time. And when it becomes a problem, it becomes a problem if you cannot get over it after a stressful event has passed. 
but if you feel anxious for several months and always on the edge, that's definitely that was definitely my case. If you're unable to cope with everyday challenges, for me, I can identify several instances where my reaction was not what would be considered normal. For example, I would be terrified to answer a question from a teacher, even if I knew the answer. Like I would have my palms would be sweaty, my heart would be racing fast. I would do anything in my power to become invisible. I remember that some days I would even <laughs> think about if a fire would start, it would have the whole class get out and I would not have to answer a question. And the same was true for any situation that involved me being the center of attention. I think I always feared that people would see that I was not good enough or that I said the wrong thing and that people would make fun of me. So I would dread presenting in front of the class. I would never volunteer to take a penalty kick. Um, even if in practice I would score most of the times, I would, I would not put myself in that situation that I was the person everybody was looking at. And I hated when playing volleyball, which I did for a long time, I hated when I had to serve because at that time it was me. <laughs> It was okay when the ball was in play, but during the serve and the seconds before serving was, were terrifying. And that continued for many, many years. I, I guess I never really understood what it was until I finally talked to someone. So I'm glad I did. So what are common, uh, common signs and symptoms of anxiety? Normally you're feeling nervous, restless, tense. You have this sense of danger, panic, or doom. It's, it's always uh, catastrophizing a situation. You're always thinking about the worst possible outcome. Constantly worrying about the future, ruminating, increased heart rate, you're sweating, feeling weak, tired, have trouble concentrating, sleeping, irritability. I can say that I felt pretty much all of these symptoms, especially the ruminating and worrying about the future were a very, very present for, I guess, 30 years of my life, if not more. And the sleeping was also a problem. I had insomnia and um, would wake up for a period in my life around 2015 to 2018 that I would wake up every day pretty much every day at three in the morning and would be reliving moments of the day and thinking about things that I did or didn't do, worrying about things that I had to, to do. And some days I would be awake for two hours before I would finally fall back asleep from exhaustion, I guess. And um, some days I just would get up and start working at four in the morning or five in the morning. and. That's kind of what led to me working very, very long hours for a long period of time. I was doing 60, 80 hours a week. And I just had that feeling that I had to do it because I needed more. I needed to achieve the next thing so I would be happy and be more successful so I would be happy. And in reality, when you're feeling with anxiety and depression, it, it doesn't really come. It doesn't matter how much you do, it just doesn't. You, you don't get happy by just doing more. That took me a time to realize, but I'm glad I did. So what can you do to treat anxiety? There are many, many things that can be done. There's a, a lot of information um, in the web about it. Um, these are some of the things that I list here that have, um, that are helpful. Um, I won't say that have helped me because I don't do recreational drugs or I don't smoke. Uh, I do drink some beers every once in a while. <laughs> um, therapy is one that um, has been really helpful. I think when I first started and uh, having that person to talk to, to share my experience and that was able to identify what was going on and guide me was, was extremely important. Um, the most widely used treatment for anxiety is the cognitive behavioral therapy. 
and that is about identifying your negative thoughts. And then when you identify them, you challenge them and you replace them with more realistic ones. For instance, before coming to the session, in my more most anxious days, I would be thinking this is going to be a disaster, everything is going to go wrong, everybody's going to hate the session. And then now I'm able to think back and say, okay, maybe, maybe some things are going to go wrong, maybe some people are not going to like it, but it's not realistic that everybody's going. And even if people, everybody doesn't like it or nobody likes it, um, still not the end of the world, I can still continue, I can move on, I can... So that has been very helpful, learning to control my thoughts. Um, another one is medication. Um, for a while I didn't want to, but I ended up um, getting into medication in the beginning, especially because I was so it was so ingrained after so many years dealing with depression and anxiety that my therapist and my family doctor decided, thought it would be best. So I, I, I started and I did feel better. It was kind of that thing that I needed to feel that boost and, and be able to move forward and start then doing some of the things, other things in this list. Uh, and last year, back in April, I talked to my doctor here that I wanted to stop. And then we did a plan for me to gradually stopping. So I was on, on medication for antidepressants for about two years and then I finally stopped, but then I replaced um, it with some of these things in this list. So one of the things that I have been doing constantly is exercising. And I try to get out and go out to nature and do a bike ride. I'm lucky to live in an area here in Germany that has all the forests and fields around. And I'm able to just go for a bike ride. And sometimes I just find a bench in the middle of the forest and just sit down and just kind of helps put things in perspective. And that another thing that I do try to do every day is meditation and mindfulness. And that's all about staying in the moment, um, learning to accept your thoughts and challenge them and see that they don't control, understand that they don't control you. It's not about eliminating your thoughts. You can never stop thinking. So I think there's a misconception about meditation and kind of having a, a blank mind. It's, it's more about observing them as they go through. So instead of having a thought that just keeps repeating itself, you just see that it arrived and let it go. And that has been really helpful. And another thing that I'll mention is the gratitude is something that uh, is also has been uh, beneficial. Um, looking at things from a diff different perspective, when I have a different uh, um, a thought, a negative thought, I always counter it with something, something positive in my life. Um, and I have been doing that with the kids as well every night when we when I put in them in bed, we always say thank you for all the things that are good in our life. And we have many things to be thankful for. And that, that definitely puts a different spin on all the negative thoughts. All right. So how can you turn the negative from anxiety into positive? Anxiety is actually rooted in your need to protect yourself. So fear is designed to keep you safe from danger. And anxiety is an adaptation of that vital and fundamental fear response. You can think of anxiety as a knowing friend with good intentions. This may help learn when to take back the control to stop anxiety from dictating many of our thoughts and actions. That may then you may start to notice that the anxiety you start to notice your anxiety response sooner and allows you to make conscious decisions about whether there is danger and how to best, best take care of yourself another thing is that anxiety directs to you whatever needs your attention it can be healthy to temporarily distract yourself from anxiety to gain perspective 
But if there is a thought or situation that causes anxiety repeatedly, your mind and body are likely trying to tell you that there is something that needs to be addressed. It may also give you a sense of what you truly care about and what and want to take action on. on. It can direct you to see that something about the situation is too important to ignore. Anxiety directs you to finding your deepest values. Noticing what you fear is a gateway to discovering what you truly value. We might feel a form of anxiety when we see someone being bullied or harmed. We might feel anxiety when a person says something that seems dishonest. This response doesn't have to mean that we are predicting the worst possible outcome. It's a vital radar that shows us what is right and wrong for us. And it might be different for every person. To fully eliminate anxiety would be to eliminate this discernment and self-awareness. Anxiety can help you discover your fullest potential. Many people who have a form of anxiety are chronic and overachievers. Anxiety is often used as a tool to help you push yourself to your limit. And the downside is that there are often negative meanings attached, such as not being good enough or valuing rest, which I mentioned were both true for me. Often anxious overachievers have difficulty saying no. They have trouble completing tasks to their liking. Yes, being a perfectionist is a, definitely a trait of anxiety. Or knowing which task to prioritize. And they also have issues trusting or working with others. So it's definitely a matter of finding the balance. And if you look at the amount you can accomplish, even with the negative pressure of anxiety, imagine how much more you could do if you felt cal focused, calm, and fulfilled by the tasks you accomplish. Anxiety can give you that glimpse into what your body and mind are able to achieve, even under great pressure. Anxiety provides the energy necessary for taking action. And this is uh, because anxiety produces a desire to do something. Like when a baby is crying, um, we are motivated. When anxiety strikes to find a solution to make it stop. This is how it is designed. So if we don't waste its energy fighting with ourselves, we can actually use it to propel action towards our goals. Sometimes a little bit of anxiety can give us that final push and the energy needed to meet a goal. But if we don't take action, then the energy is just getting bottled up inside with nowhere to go but in circles. And a mind that's spinning in circles or a body that fidgets or panics is a stifling the, it's stifling the energy of anxiety. So taking action can, action can channel and alleviate that pressure. And the stress response can help you have the energy to do that. So it's the best to channel your anxiety into action while it's an imaginable level, before it's too high. Then you can actually use it as a motivator to study for a test or prepare for a presentation or whatever you need to do. And finally, anxiety can teach you to find balance in life. If you practice responding to anxiety in purposeful ways, can guide a process of finding balance in every aspect of your life, like between work and play, between social time and personal time, rest and activity and so on. It gives us clues to whatever your world may be out of balance when, whenever your world may be out, out of balance. So taking charge of the relationship with anxiety may be the most rewarding thing to do for yourself. You can prove to yourself what you are capable of by learning to consciously respond to your anxiety rather than allowing it to control you. This process can help you develop incredible acceptance, confidence, and leadership abilities. So to summarize, 
I think it's we need to accept that anxiety will be there. You will have some anxiety is normal. And it can only be helpful if you're willing to first welcome it. Uh, it took me a long time to accept it. But if you accept it may, be it may arise, whether it has a good reason to or not, that can determine how you choose to handle it. And reminding yourself that you can benefit from it may help to negate the anger or frustration you feel when it arises in its many uncomfortable ways. So when you feel anxiety setting in, just remember its advantages, how it can motivate you, keep you alert and quick on your feet, help you make well thought out decisions and allow you to perform at your very best. So that was it for the session. Um, after my journey dealing with um, anxiety for a long time, I strongly believe in this sentence, um, nothing can bring you peace but yourself. I think we can all change our relationship with anxiety, but you really need to do the work and it is work. Uh, it's not easy, it's a daily battle, but it can be done. I'm finally in a place where I can accept it and move forward. And I hope if you're feeling some of these things, you can too. Um, and if you want to talk about it, feel free to message me here on the conference or connect with me on LinkedIn. Uh, sometimes it's good to just share. Um, even though I'm not a therapist, uh, sometimes just having someone to talk about, I'm always open to share my experiences and things that worked uh, for me. So um, thank you for joining. And um, I think we are over a little bit, but um, if there are any questions, I don't think there are any questions. Uh, let me start my camera again. No, there are no questions. So yeah, thanks again. I hope, hope this was helpful. There are many resources out there and, and if you want to talk, just ping me. I will share anything that has worked for me and, and what things I've done and things I looked at. Um, all right. Thank you, everyone, and have a great rest of your day and rest of conference. I hope we can see some of you in person in the next DrupalCon.